create one hostile rainforest and the world's greatest river. Add eight young adventurers. Then roast in tropical heat for three weeks. It's a recipe for tension, trauma and personal triumph. Each night the adventurers record a video diary providing a unique insight into their true feelings about the extreme expedition. The young adventurers were halfway through their expedition in the Amazon rainforest and were about to begin their final mission to build a huge breeding enclosure for rare red wakari monkeys. Before they began the challenging project, they got a chance to meet one of the endangered creatures. That's so cute! So adorable! It's really, really human as well. She was just so cool and sweet. And if you put your hand next to the little cage, she tried to like put her hand out and touch her hand. It was so cool. And the ears, if the ears were slightly enlarged and like changed colour, be like humans. Seeing the monkey today was absolutely brilliant. I thought that I got quite like, well, I kept it in myself, but I got quite emotional because it's like that's the whole reason we're here. The young monkeys are rescued by a local charity after being taken from the wild as pets. Often their parents are killed. They're so rare and to find out that people shoot the mothers and fathers and eat them, I thought that was absolutely disgusting. But I suppose we can't, but we can't, we can call that disgusting, but things we do to them probably disgusting, that's their native tradition. The first phase of the building project involved laying around 3,000 bricks in just three days. I know it's going to be really hard work building the enclosure. It's going to be tough, it's going to be challenging, and it is going to be hard work in, in the heat. But it's a privilege to think that I can make a difference here, worlds apart from my home, and that I can save a unique and amazing creature as the Akari monkey. I was really surprised today, actually, when we went to the... Um monkey enclosed place because I was really uh, shocked how much work actually needs to do into it. We were all like, oh my goodness, can we really do this? It's absolutely huge. We've got a couple of helpers there, but they don't actually do it. They supervise us to make sure we're doing it right. It's our project. It's only us doing it, and it really is tough, and it really is hard work. It's been a long day doing the monkey enclosure. I'm absolutely exhausted. I worked so, so hard. After such a tiring day, there was a very special surprise in store. Today we all got parcels from home, which was absolutely brilliant. Hey team, a delivery has just arrived off the boat. I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. Brilliant night <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. Let's approach uh, this fence. <laughs> <laughs> Hold as hard as you can, children. Everybody's like this pack of wild vultures trying to get out there. As soon as they put it on the table, we all came and ripped it to shreds. We were like hyenas ripping it like apart. And I got the, the I got this huge, huge parcel, and I'm just so pleased because it's like honestly, my whole heart is in this package. I got That's my sister's hand right here. I got her, Joe. I'm going to keep this card because it'll always remind me of the times and how much it cheered me. Because, you know, I was thinking about quitting halfway through, wasn't I? And now I know that my parents are glad I'm doing it. I've got like recognition, I think it's gone. Um, when I actually opened this and started reading them, I did start crying. I did not hold back. I was just crying just because I missed them, because I love them, and I was just crying so much. I couldn't help it, really. I did cry when I read the letters. To hear my parents say that they were proud of me in the letter, that really made me really happy at the same time. To know that they're proud of me means a lot to me. The adventurers also got video messages from their families. Hi, did you? I hope you haven't been mistaken for one of them ginger monkeys out there. Ah, what a jolly good night it is tonight. 
Oh, hello, Doctor. Hey, cheerio. Oh, Bim, Bim. Hello. How are you? I'm oh, good, Bob Fowler. How are you? I'm okay. What a good evening we've had today, haven't I we? I know. It's been absolutely brilliant. We, we've seen our we've seen our parents things. They they they, they, they did little video things, and it's very funny, wasn't it, Doctor? Yes. It's a shame we didn't see any cricket. <laughs> I do like my good old spot of cricket. <laughs> He has such a fat cat, it is so cool. It's like that big. It's a fat cat. Basically, it's just a belly with legs. Yeah, that's how Callie described it. Yeah. You stole her description. Oh, I'm sorry. Bad. Mm. I thought the videos were really fun. The videos are great. That just clinched it for me. This has been the perfect date. Absolutely no dating match. I wasn't really listening to what they were saying. I was just looking at them and thinking, wow, I love you, I, mi I, I miss you, you mean so much to me, I'm going to give you the biggest hug when we get home. Just misses you. He hasn't been in the, your bedroom. Yeah, really. <laughs> oh. It's just a really good feeling to see them there and go and hope you're doing well. You know, you've done amazing to get this far. No matter what happens, we'll still love you and just stuff like that. It's just really cheered me up because I've got like an incentive to finish and do well because I know my parents are proud of me and that means off to me. So many letters from all the people that I love so much, all my best friends, letters are here and I'm going to read them and I'm going to put them under my pillow tonight and I'm going to feel safe and I'm going to feel warm and I'm going to feel... Oh, just so great. There's nothing, nothing that could take me off this high right now. There was one member of the team who wasn't having such a good time. Jamie wasn't seeing eye to eye with some members of the group and was beginning to feel more and more isolated. I got called common and a chap because I said, oh yeah, she's quite fit. So I said, it's right for a girl to call a boy fit. It's not right for you to call a girl fit. So whatever I say basically, is always best um, or Kylie to contradict or go against or change or manipulate to suit them. You can't, you can't win, yeah. Many of the team even took to using code names like Red Ant for Jamie behind his back. Good what day. are we talking about again? We're talking about um, so Red well. Ants. We're basically, we're here to talk about Jamie. Jamie's got a big personality. He, he likes to express himself, put it that way. But the others have really been behind his back and it was a bit pathetic really. I didn't expect that from them. I thought they'd be a bit childish, but that really no, took the biscuit to say too far. He's mad to everybody constantly. He thinks he's, like, he's, he's, he thinks he's macho. Me. Every... Matt told me some of the stuff they've been saying. It's really pathetic, actually. But I think that if they got a problem with me, come and take my face at least on, like, hide behind my back and snigger behind my back, because that's just pathetic. Next day, things came to a head when the team talked in code about Jamie within his earshot. How did you actually think the bricks about? are red? No. I said no comment. <laughs> are you talking about the red bricks, Sam? <laughs> <laughs> did you oh, see? No. Today we were just last door for him. They were talking, or we, we or they or anyone were talking about him, like five foot from him, excluding him in a group and talking about him behind his back, in code words. He got very upset. I don't blame him, really, because he has been excluded. Not, not like all the time, but he has been excluded at times. At the beginning he was like fine, but just recently he seems to have like, decreased in popularity. Oh, quick word. Leader Ben decided the situation had gone far enough. I just wanted to have a quick chat, because um, you seem to be becoming less and less involved um, you know, in the group, and that's not how we run expeditions. He came and sat with me and we had a talk, and he said that I think the best thing to do is get the old group, so we got the old group together and sort stuff out. Guys, can you just stop what you're doing, yeah, and just come over here, please? And we all had a big group chat about how he's being excluded and, like, mentally bullied. What has come to know is that one person has gradually become psychologically bullied, all right, by you lot. You're making this for one individual, and that person's Jamie. Anyone been the victim of bullying? Yeah. Yeah? Anyone enjoyed the experience? No. Right, well, it stops right now. So sit down now in a circle, whatever it might take, so you can eyeball one another, 
and sort these issues out. I think it's a bit harsh that people, to be in with people, they're going to make me feel bad. Yeah. It does have to stop because it's not very nice on Jamie, really. And I'm not saying I haven't done anything, but I mean, you know, you are taking it a bit too far if you don't like him. Fine, you mightn't like him, but you don't have to do that, really, do you? You guys got a problem with me, but I just... I wouldn't mind so much if you came up to my face and said instead of everything behind my back all the time. It's horrible being bullied and I can't imagine how it must feel for him, feel for him in such an extreme environment to have the eight, the seven people that you're supposed to be bonding with turning against you. And from now on, I'm sorting myself out. I'm not saying anything about him. I find it physically impossible to get on with him. I don't like him at all. I, I can't like, like him, but I can be civil to him. Yeah. I'll pretend she didn't say that. I can't like him, but I can be so good to him. <laughs> what? It's a perfectly good phrase. I will admit I have, like, taken the mick out of you loads of times. And, um, yeah, I know, I know you have. And, um, my back, my yeah, head. and I would like to apologise for that, but I can say that I can't, like, just start liking you magically. I like to be honest with you, I'm not overly keen on you and Sam, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're yeah, just, like, we're just, we're just different, different types of people. I've said things which probably offended you, right? In a way, de well, not probably, definitely, right? Yeah. Just fair enough. Um, and so, for those things, I will apologise now, right? And I won't say any more, but I just cannot find a way to get on with you at all. There's just something in me, and I just cannot function. Just you just really, really get me everything you do, the way you, you act to you other to people. Sam, you're putting your foot down and saying, right, I'm not going to budge because I just feel the way I feel. Oh, no, you can't I go, You can't go through life um, feeling like that. There will be time and time and time again you'll meet people throughout your life that you'll have to work with and get on with because of the situation. Mm -hmm. And what you've just said is that you're not willing to no, budge one that. iota not to that. get on with Jamie. What I meant was, I just can't... It's not that I won't work with him, um, it's, I can't get on with him, that's what I meant. Like my, but I you can get on with him because you, you just have to give a bit. Yeah. That's the point. You can't get stuck in your ways. You have to give and Jamie has to give. It's a two-way street. George, you're apologising. John, apologise. Sam didn't. Sam came up and said that he just doesn't like me. He doesn't know why. He just doesn't. Carly said that she doesn't like me. But just thanks, I don't like them too. And I said that before. But I don't know why Beth didn't like me. Oh yeah, I remember now. She wanted to get in with Sam and Carly. I think we all owe you a big apology. Yeah. And I think we have come to the end of it now. And I think it's brought us a lot closer. I feel a lot closer to you now. And I'm sorry. Oh, thanks, and I think everybody else in the group is as well. I'm sorry for everyone else as well, so I know I'm a bit harsh at times. Oh, Pile on! <laughs> <laughs> I do feel bad for him, and I feel bad for the way we all treated him. And I apologise many times today. But it's a two-way thing. It's a two-way thing in which he needs to change in order for everybody else to change. I know that in a canoe, I can admit that I'm bossy and I get frustrated easily. Like, get up. I can admit that. So, that's, that is one of my faults. I think we've all learned a lesson from what happened today, you know. Um, so, we'll just go away from it being stronger people, you know what I mean? And. I'm going to have to find a way to cope with... Jamie. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to overcome it and deal with it because you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a young adult, so I have to, don't I? <laughs> what are you looking like that for? <laughs> After nearly a fortnight in the humid rainforest, some of the team were starting to have real problems with their feet. I'm waddling like a penguin. It takes me ages to walk anywhere, and it's, it's agony when I do walk there, and it's just not particularly nice. Apparently, I've got the first symptoms of trench foot, which is really, really odd, because I've been studying World War II at history, and that's what they got in the World Wars, and we're only out here, and I'm getting first symptoms mm -hmm. of trench foot. I really do hum. My feet are really bad today. I didn't basically wash them right and dry them right, so I've paid for it in pain. I'm wearing wet boots constantly throughout the day. Um, basically, until I sleep, I wear wet boots, and that's really, really bad for your feet because they get completely waterclogged. They're so incredibly sore, I swear. It's just so painful. Every step is like burning, burning in my feet. It's just all cut open at the bottom. It's horrible. I'm getting it from both sides. 
It's pretty grim. I think I'm going to have to move, actually. <laughs> oh, yuck. Yeah, we've got Beth was lucky enough to be chosen for an amazing trip by float plane to try to find rare red wakari monkeys in the wild. Never seen anything like this. Bethany gets to go on this trip on a plane to go see wakari monkeys. I'm so, so jealous of her because I'd love to do it. It sounds absolutely amazing. We've got a walk, maybe an hour, maybe two hours, not too sure, to try and find these monkeys. Uh, if we see the red wakaris, we are going to be so, so lucky. I'm really, 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 really jealous of Beth because I love my kids. Touchdown. Good lad. Wakari monkeys are one of the main reasons we came here, and to be able to see them, oh, must be absolutely amazing. Like, I'm just so happy for her. And so jealous at the same time. Like I would have loved to do it. She has worked very hard, you know. Ben said that just because I've been really working hard and that him and Polly had noticed it, that was really cool. I was a little bit nice today, actually, when we found out about the trip. I think it's unfair, and that's because a lot of people have been putting in just as much effort, if not more. But stuff happens, so can't really complain. The decision's been made. If it was anyone, I'd pick Beth, I think. So I'm pleased it was her. If anyone. To go on the expedition, I'm sure she'll have a brilliant time. I'm missing Beth. She's not here today. It's fair enough. But she's a buddy. She's so nice and friendly and smiley, and you can have a laugh with her and you can flirt with her. It's a laugh. In fact, the trip proved really tough for Beth. The monkeys were very elusive, and the researchers got up incredibly early to try to find them. I had to be up at half past two this morning. Um, and went on a solid eight and a half hour trek through the jungle looking for the monkeys. The trekking was absolutely exhausting. I had no food because we had to get there in time. Frustratingly, all the effort came to nothing. To my disappointment, didn't actually find any, which goes to show how rare they are. Back at the building site, the pressure was on to finish laying all the bricks and complete the first phase of the enclosure project. Well, it's been the hottest day so far today. Um, it's been quite exhausting, to be honest. Today, we haven't got enough done, and I was very disappointed because I worked so hard this morning and I really shattered myself out. Today has probably been one of the most stressful days of my life, and I'm not exaggerating at all. I don't think I've ever worked physically. In the morning, I don't think I've ever physically worked as hard as I have done today. Cameron and I, just worked incredibly hard, it just knocked it out of us completely. After that, I felt so physically drained, and then for the rest of the day, basically everybody completely slapped from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock. The most minimal amount of work was done, nothing was done. A couple of bricks laid in three hours, that was it, absolutely no work was done. Should I take the canoe? Or maybe... Or maybe the elevator? <laughs> Actually, I was the only one who placed myself this morning. Everyone went flat this morning and couldn't be part of this afternoon. So that was a bit frustrating because this morning everyone was shouting at me saying, oh, work faster, work faster. But at the end of it, I've been, at, in the afternoon, I was the only one who could work. Everyone else was stressed and tired. <laughs> oh! What are you doing? <laughs> this does not look like work. Sam was the leader thing. He was good in the morning. He kept everybody right, uh, like in their regiment and tough, and he got the work done. In the afternoon, it's like he completely lost his role. He didn't do anything at all. <laughs> Callie was working like a crazy woman. She looked like she was going to have some men some sort of mental panic attack or anything or something. Buddy, grab a bucket, fill up your brown um, wooden thing with cement. Oh. Is that white one over there next to Jamie's brown thing? Now go! Calm down. Master John! Kelly's just um, gone a bit psychic. We're here to enjoy ourselves, not to um, stress ourselves out, which seems to be the idea of most people to just moan at people and 
And if you stop for a break to have a drink, which is vital, you'll get some you get snapped out. You have, you've got crack on top. Well you've got join on top of join then. Okay. John. Everyone stop it. Beth came back from her thing. And it's like stress on everyone. I she stressed on me, I said don't stress on me. Matt said yeah, Beth, don't stress, she stressed on Matt. <laughs> Do something! There you go. No, don't play. Matt, 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 well, she done half a day yesterday, we done a full day yesterday, so we she hasn't done any more work on us today. Matt, I actually need bricks to save yeah, time Matt, for me walking Matt, back and forth, then Matt. laying bricks. Why don't you collect the bricks, bring them over, then I can plonk yeah, them on yeah, the wall. Been building now for seven hours solid, um, and I'm absolutely shattered. I've been stressed at people, I've been shouting at people, but it's just because I've been up for a good 20 hours now. After slacking in the afternoon, work went on well past nightfall. Don't go Seriously, though. No. By himself. Yeah. Out came the jungle nightlife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this bug's flying in my face. <laughs> Where'd he go? Oh, my God. <laughs> Basically, tonight has turned into an absolute nightmare. This morning we were planning to get all the brick work done, so we didn't have to do anything at all tomorrow. Me and Sam did the top part of our wall and we bodged it because we were so tired. Sam, do, do you reckon seriously that that's good enough? No, it's so in those holes. I'm not that happy about Sam and Beth. We said, you know, you've got to be careful, otherwise we'll be doing it again tomorrow. But they were going, oh, I, I don't care, we can do it tomorrow, and we just have to do it all again, so it saves them nice. We haven't eaten washed, sorted anything out, and to be quite honest with you, I'm ex exhausted physically and emotionally, and I want to go home. This has been one of the most miserable days of my life. I'm not being dramatic. I really am not being dramatic. It's been so hard, and I've wanted to give up. Oh, I'm really not in the mood the night, seriously. Today was the most stressful day I've ever had in my life. It was horrible. I'm really struggling with it. I think there's going to be lots of other nights like this and lots of nights that are worse than this too. And if the next week is a living nightmare, you know, then so be it. But right now, I just want to go home and I want to give all the people, all the people I know and love hugs and feel comforted to know they're near. Hopefully, I can take the goodness out of it and just enjoy it whenever I can. And when I can, I can be sad about it. But I can still remember this is just the most exper amazing experience that I've ever had. And when I go home, I will always have that to take away with me, which is good. Next morning, a final push took them to the end of phase one of the building. They'd laid a phenomenal 3,000 bricks. got it done and it's so amazing seeing something from nothing go nine nine layers of bricks up it's amazing it looks so big and I can't believe we've done that and I'm so proud of us and so proud of everything we've done it turned them a day off for an extraordinary trip to head even deeper into the Amazon and meet a remote tribe the Ashwal Indians and then we had to go on these rocky boats which are really 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 unstable we had really bad steering and for the first about half an hour on the boat we, we went into about five bushes the Ashwal tribe were once best known for shrinking the heads of their enemies but now they live a peaceful life surviving on the rainforest around them I was really nervous, I didn't know that customs were anything. And they shook hands and they had drums playing the music playing, it was really overwhelming. It's unreal. <laughs> and it was absolutely amazing, we got an amazing welcome. It, we, we came in and it was just so strange to see people living completely differently from how we were. They eat different things, they dress differently, they sleep, they, do, they sleep differently from us. <laughs> this is incredible, it's completely surreal. 
I've, this is what I was looking forward to the most, and it's just wonderful. It's such an experience for me. <laughs> the adventurers got a chance to share in the Ashwal traditions, which have hardly changed for generations. It is absolutely out of this world. I'm experiencing a completely different culture, and it's incredible. Um, I'm, I'm lost for words, really. But the Ashwal's way of life is under great threat. Just a few hundred tribes people remain as the forest they rely on is destroyed. Once we got all like acquainted with each other, we started dancing around the fire, and that was the most amazing thing I think I've ever done in my life. I'm just trying to save every moment because moment, it's really precious. And it's like I can't believe we're under the same sky as we are at home, but everything's so different. Oh, I've had the most incredible evening of my life. They've just been fantastic this evening. I'm just meeting all these strange people that just, they're just incredible. They're watching me now. And they're just, it's just surreal. They're, they're fantastic. They're so kind and wonderful. Do you say love? I do. Say hola. <laughs> this is my little friend who I've been dancing with. I I, <laughs> I gotta go in because I gotta have some food and stuff. Okay. Hello. These people are just so cool, I can't get over it. I'd stay here forever if I could. I think they're fantastic people. And I hope they never change and I hope this carries on forever. The next day, the team had to return to base camp to finish their building project, but they would never forget the unique time they spent in a completely different world. This is something that I will remember for the rest of my life, something I will never forget, and I can't help but smile. I feel really privileged and really honoured to be amongst these people who have welcomed me so openly into their home. It's, it's just been one of the best experiences of my life.